Kings Island has finally officially announced Orion, the new for 2020 Giga Coaster by Bolliger and Mabiard. Fans of Kings Island have been asking for this Giga Coaster for years now, seems like forever, and they are finally getting what they want. Here we have a coaster that stands 287 feet tall, has a drop of 300 feet, a top speed of 91 miles per hour, and a total track length of 5,321 feet. So right off the bat, it's obvious that this is pretty short for a Giga Coaster. It's actually even shorter than Leviathan at Canada's Wonderland, which people also complain about being a bit short. This ride has been met with a lot of mixed reception upon its leak and announcement. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit here, but mostly I'm going to be focusing on the ride elements and what I think this ride is going to deliver. Orion's theme, as described by Kings Island, is the latest prototype vehicle developed by the Project X initiative. Scientists are in a race against time to develop technology capable of weaving transport vehicles through a coming meteor storm and traveling to a new planet within the Orion constellation. For the program to be successful, it needs volunteers to help with testing. So basically, this is a simulator for scientists to test out. It's sort of open-ended and slightly confusing, maybe. I don't expect this ride to be themed that well, as is typical with Cedar Fair. The logo itself looks pretty good, although I feel like it's a bit generic looking, but it's not bad. The name Orion, I think, is alright. I know the story of Orion, as some have pointed out ties in pretty well with the park because of Orion hunting the beast. I do like the name Polaris better, but we're well beyond that now. Orion is the new Giga Coaster. I think it's a solid name. It has a pretty decent looking logo. The theme is slightly confusing, but it's not bad overall. Looking at this POV, you go up this 287 foot tall lift hill, crest the top and go down a very steep 300 foot drop. We're not sure exactly how steep it is yet, probably around 80 degrees, as a lot of gigas are. Then we go through this massive wave turn-like element, which looks really interesting. And then we go up into the turnaround, almost like a reverse treble clef type of element. This is over 200 feet tall, it's huge. Then we go into this 56 foot tall speed hill right here, which looks like it's going to deliver some amazing airtime. And then over a floater airtime camelback hill. And then we twist right and go up into this figure eight helix type element. And this looks similar to something like Shambhala at Port Aventura, which is really interesting. I think it looks awesome. Then we go up into this hill here, dive down. You might get a little airtime here and then go into the final breaks. Overall, I really like the layout of Orion. There's not many surprises here. It's pretty much spot on with what we've seen from the leaks. And there is definitely some interesting things thrown in there. I think the speed hill looks amazing, and it's very similar to the one found on Leviathan, which I've heard awesome things about. The figure eight helix looks like it's going to be pretty fun and could deliver some pretty good forces as well. The thing I'm most curious about on this ride is that huge wave turn like hill after that first drop. It is absolutely massive. It stands at 174 feet, and I think you're going to experience some interesting sideways airtime there. It's going to be really cool to see what this feels like on a large-scale B&M coaster like this. Something else that is really cool about this ride as well is there's this really cool head chopper moment. As you exit the figure eight helix, and you go between the support from the first drop and the bottom of the first drop, and that looks like it's going to be amazing right there. I think this ride is going to deliver a few decent pops of airtime. I don't think it's going to have any crazy ejector moments, but I think it's going to deliver some decent floater like on the big wave turn like element, the speed hill, and then that large camelback hill. And as well as the first drop, I think there's going to be some pretty good airtime on all of those elements. One thing about this ride, even the smallest elements on this ride are pretty tall. Of course, the lift hill is 287 feet tall. The second hill, which is the wave turn like element, is 174 feet tall. The turnaround is 202 feet tall. Then you have the 56 foot tall speed hill. Then a 147 foot tall camelback airtime hill right after that. And then the helix is 125 feet tall. 
Then the next hill after that is 90 feet tall. And what they're considering the last hill, which is actually when you go up into the final break run, is 83 feet tall. So yes, another very tall break run from B&M. 83 foot tall break run. So I think this is a really great looking Giga Coaster layout. It definitely feels similar to a lot of the other Gigas, but it's also unique in its own ways. A lot of people are upset about the length of this ride, and while I can understand some of that disappointment and frustration, not every single ride needs to be a record breaker. I don't think it was really necessary for Kings Island to break a ton of records with this, and there could be a couple different reasons as to why they didn't make it longer or try to top Fury. One of the reasons being thrown out there is that Kings Island did not want to one-up Cedar Point and make something bigger than Millennium Force. It does sound kind of ridiculous, but it could be true. Take it for what it's worth. It's all speculation. Another thing is adding much more length to something like this costs a lot of money and Maybe it was just done for budgetary reasons. Like I said, I don't think it's necessary for Kings Island to get something necessarily as long as like Fury. It would have cost a lot more money and they're going to attract just as many people to the park, especially general public, with what they have here. I mean, we all know all of us are going to go ride this next year. Who are we kidding? Every one of us wants to get out there next year and ride this. The general public are going to eat this up. This is a great move on Kings Island's part. They're getting their Giga. They have something that looks really strong, very well done. I think the pacing is gonna be pretty great on this ride. It does seem to be a lot more graceful than Fury 325, which has more low to the ground elements. And I think that's fine. It is gonna deliver some pretty good forces, I think though, as compared to a B&M Hyper. So I think it's gonna differ enough from say Diamondback. You know, it's not gonna be something that focuses all on the floater airtime like that. That's a very hyper style ride. This is very Giga style in its layout, and I think it's going to be incredible. The color scheme of this ride looks great. It has a bright blue colored track, something similar to the track of Gatekeeper, as well as white supports. So the color scheme is very nice looking. It fits in well with the theme, and I think it's going to stand out in the skyline. It's going to look fantastic. B&M's always look great, especially these Giga Coasters. It's going to be very large and imposing. You're going to be able to see it from all over the park. And this is just overall going to be a great addition to Kings Island's lineup. I think this is something that they could really use. And it's just going to make the park that much better. What are your guys' thoughts on the announcement of Orion for Kings Island in 2020? I know there is a lot to discuss here. Let me know if I missed anything in the comments below. And be sure to like, comment, subscribe, like my page Coaster Daddy on Facebook, and follow me at Coaster Daddy Official on Instagram. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Coaster Daddy. Bye.